Welcome back everyone. I'm Dr. Rhett Smith for ProtonGuru.com. We're going to talk about lesson 6.3 in the Organic Chemistry 2 primer. And what we want to do today is look at the different types of reactions that carbonyls can engage in. And we're going to look at specific examples of each of these types of reactions. But this is my own personal system for breaking these carbonyl reactions down and classifying them. I'm going to refer to reactions as type A, B, C, and D. Again, this is my personal way to categorize these for learning them and studying them. You won't find this in every other textbook. And type A is what is called single nucleophilic addition. You should be able to find nucleophilic addition to carbonyls online or in other textbooks. I'm going to call this type A. Now the net result is you add a nucleophile to the carbonyl carbon, and that's going to replace the pi bond. It would work something like this. So you've added it to this carbon. Carbon has four bonds, can't have five bonds, so the thing that the nucleophile bond replaces is the pi bond. The second thing you do is you protonate the oxygen. Right After this step, the nucleophile has attached. The pi bond's not there anymore, but you've pushed the charge on the O. So if you add an acid, like I do in step two, I'm just going to protonate it. In that way, your net result is that you have this scaffold that was from the carbonyl, you've added the nucleophile, and then you've protonated. That's the type A reaction. This works for several different carbonyls. That's why I have Y just being generically sitting there. It could be a ketone or an aldehyde, some other functional groups. And you can use different nucleophiles. You could use water, you could use various things. And as we go through the next 17 lessons or so on carbonyl chemistry, we'll learn specific examples of type A reactions. Now what I call B, in general terms, people call nucleophilic acyl substitution reactions, sometimes abbreviated S, subscript N, A, C. I might say SNAC, just to abbreviate this, nucleophilic acyl substitution, type B. The net result here is that instead of just having the nucleophile add and then protonating the oxygen, the net result and you'll see the steps later in the course, is that you replace or substitute, as the name says, the Y group with the nucleophile. All right, so various nucleophiles can do this with a variety of different carbonyl functional groups. And the net result is the nucleophile is on where the Y used to be. This nucleophile could be an anion to start, or it could be a poor nucleophile like water or alcohol that loses an H in the course of acting as a nucleophile, like we've seen for SN1 reactions, for example. Some of these reactions need an acid or base, but we'll see specific cases throughout the semester once again. Next we have what I call type C reactions. And this is actually a combination of type B reaction, then type A reaction. So you do the type B reaction, then you do the type A reaction. Say, so, well, well, how does that work? The type B reaction was nucleophilic acyl substitution, so substitute the Y for nucleophile. Say, so, okay, that's fine. Type A, you're now telling me you do next. What happens there? Well, remember with type A, the nucleophile adds to the same carbon that has the carbonyl. So add that nucleophile and then protonate. So what's the net result here? Well, that was type B and that was type A. Right, so at the end I've got two nucleophiles attached to the carbon. So replace the pi bond and replace the leaving group, the Y. Replace both of those with two bonds to the nucleophile. All right, all of these reactions you'll notice you've got to keep track of keeping the carbonyl carbon with four bonds. So take away the pi bond and the Y group, add two new bonds in the form of nucleophiles, protonate. That's the type C reaction. What I call type D reactions are reactions where I take the carbonyl carbon and instead of taking this group off or doing something else, I take both the bonds the O away. Now this poor carbon needs two bonds. Now in the type D reaction, all of them lose the O completely. That was the carbonyl O. You need to replace the two bonds that the carbonyl carbon lost with two other bonds. And there are different ways, four options, that you can use to replace the double bond O. But for the purposes of studying these reactions, it's still helpful to call them type D, 
because there are very few very specific reactions where you lose the whole carbonyl oxygen. Let's talk about the four different ways that you can make up for the completely lost O. I need two bonds to that carbon. How do I get them? Well, perhaps the most obvious way would be just to make two new single bonds to the carbon that lost its oxygen. All right, and all these reactions are taking nucleophiles and reacting with carbonyls. Say, so, okay, what if we were able to take two nucleophiles and stick them on there with single bonds? That will definitely work. What's another option? Well, some nucleophiles might have the ability to form a double bond to carbon, depending on what that nucleophile is. That would make up for the two bonds lost for the O as well. What if, instead, we don't even use a nucleophile to make the new bonds? Maybe your reagents simply pull the oxygen off and leave this carbon by itself. Well, the group beside the carbon might be able to make two new bonds. Right? So you'd actually have a carbon here that used to have the carbon double bond O. Lost those two. Go ahead and make two new bonds to the Y group. Like a nitrogen would work for that. All right, so that's another possibility to keep the carbon with its four bonds in the course of the reaction. What if we have a kind of a combination of this strategy and this strategy? Right? What if we take that carbonyl carbon, make one new bond to a nucleophile, and make one new bond to the Y? Right? Don't ask Y to give you the whole triple bond. Just make, it was already attached one, make one new bond to the nucleophile. And the Y could be an R group itself. Right, we could draw it like this, one of the two sides of the carbon. Now, on page 126 of the Organic Chemistry 2 primer, in the 2021 edition anyway, if you go to lesson 6.3 on protonguru.com, there's a really nice chart that summarizes many, many, many of the reactions of carbonyls we're going to learn. This is a great study sheet, a great study aid if you're trying to learn carbonyl reactions and it lists them in terms of type A, type B, type C, type D, which carbonyl functional groups, ketones, aldehydes, carboxylic acids, whatever, and which nucleophiles, water, Grignard reagents, alcohols, amines, all kinds of things, which combinations of functional group and nucleophile lead to type A reactions, which lead to type B reactions, type C, type D. And this is why it's a very useful tool for studying.